Okay, Millie, when you're ready, thank you. And Nathan, thank you. I'd gone in to try something on. It was an idea of my own. Mother had been against it, and so had the assistant, but I insisted. As soon as I tried it on, I knew they'd been right. It just didn't suit me at all. I looked silly in the thing. Well, this girl had brought the dress up from the workroom. And when the assistant, Miss Francis, had asked her something about it, this girl, to show us what she meant, had held the dress up so she was wearing it. And it just suited her. She was the right type for it. Just as I was the wrong type. She was a very pretty girl too, with big dark eyes. And that didn't make it any better. Well, when I tried the thing on and looked at myself and knew it was all wrong, I caught sight of this girl, smiling at Miss Francis, as if to say, doesn't she look awful? And I was absolutely furious. I was very rude to both of them, and then I went to the manager and told him that this girl had been very impertinent and... and... How could I have known what would happen afterwards? If she'd been some miserable, plain little creature, I don't suppose I would have done it. But she was very pretty, and as if she could take care of herself. I couldn't be sorry for her. Why did you say you kissed the ground where I walked? Someone ought to kill me. I'm so tired. Oh, I wish I could rest. Just rest. I'm a seagull. No, that's not it. I'm an actress. Oh well. So he's here too. He was always laughing at my dreams, and so gradually I ceased to believe too, and lost heart. And then I was so preoccupied with love and jealousy, and a constant fear for my baby. I became petty and common. When I acted, I did it stupidly. I didn't know what to do with my hands, or, or how to stand on stage. I couldn't control my voice. But you can't imagine what it feels like when you know you are acting abominably. I'm a seagull. No, that's not it again. Do you remember you shot a seagull? A man came along by chance, saw it and destroyed it just to pass the time, a subject for a short story. That's not it. What was I talking about? Yes, about the stage. I'm not like that now. Now, I am a real actress. I act with intense enjoyment, with enthusiasm. On the stage, I am intoxicated <coughs> and I feel that I <coughs> am beautiful. But now, while I'm living here, I go for walks a lot. I keep walking and thinking. Thinking and feeling that I'm growing stronger in spirit with every day that passes. I think I know now, Christina, that what matters in our work, whether you act on stage or write stories, what really matters is not fame or glamour, not the things I used to dream about, but knowing how to endure things, how to bear one's cross and have faith. I have faith now, and I'm not suffering quite so much. And when I think of my vocation, I'm not afraid of life.
Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the Perfidist report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came masses from the king who all hailed me. Thane of Cordwall. By which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with Hail King that shalt be. This had I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightest not lose the jewel of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Glamest thou art and cordial, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full over the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. If thou wouldest be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldest highly, that wouldest thou holily, wouldest not play false, and yet wouldest wrongly win. Thou hast have great glamour, that which cries thus thou must do, if thou shalt have it, and which rather thou dost fear to do, that wishest should be undone. Why be hither, that I may pour my spirits in thy ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue, all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal.